welcome everyone to a really a really bad podcast. Can you can you hear me all right by the way? Yeah, I, I can hear. Even, you. Okay, I didn't even do that check before we even started. But hello. Welcome to a production of Film Caffeine. Uh I I'm I'm Mithy. I'm the dude in in the videos and I, I I'm the vi- uh e- mm. ah uh, Scribe, you want to introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Scribe. That was a wonderful start right there. That was amazing. To the first episode of us together um, on this casual chat conversation dog shit. Um, as you may know, a little bit of preface. We had a podcast on the Film Caffeine channel for a while. Then now I got self-conscious and I thought, I don't know if I want like the first 10 of our videos to be just all podcasts. It's cool, but like, I don't, I don't know what it looked like on the homepage. That might just me being overthinking things. The podcast is still up. It's just unlisted. You can go check it out. I haven't like linked like everywhere. Um, but you know, fresh starts, fresh beginnings. Why the hell not? Uh, so is the second channel. Uh, and uh, you can, we, we do, we do, we do hoot, we do nanny. Uh, ha- Fuck. Hoot and Nanny hooligans? No. Shenanigans. There oh my god. It took me fucking five minutes to think of the word as, shenanigans. As ever, you are ever the graceful poet. I am so I am I am so graceful like a like a like an ice ice skater. Like uh, a I, I be, swan in the sky. Like like a like a Tony Hawk pro skater for I don't know what the like, like are they silver making? pike like a silver pike dancing in the water. Like Shut the fuck up with your extremely descriptive shit. That's stop making yourself look better than I am. I am the sole master. You are that beneath was... me. Mm, that's not true. Yes. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh, but yeah, no, this is fun. Uh, welcome to the second channel. I've got like the thing is, I've got three like interview podcasts that we did with a bunch of friends. Uh, a couple, a, a couple lovely boys of the channel. Um, I that I got the boys that I've got lined up that like I just haven't edited yet because I'm a dumbass who doesn't edit things edit properly right it's literally it's been in the backlog like for a few weeks so by the time I release it we're like making references to like stuff like before DC fandom so it's not great but I I'll, I'll release them all like all at once and they're amazing episodes so. Even though some of the references are a bit dated by a few weeks, um, it's still some good episodes, so you should check it out. It'll be coming out soon. Hopefully this comes out on Sunday. Uh, I, I hope so. Finger, fingers crossed. This is, I, am, I am not on my best show business mood right now. But, yeah, whatever. How are you doing? Yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing fine myself. It's a nice, it's a nice day today. Um, Tomorrow we're going hiking. Ooh, uh, that's nice. Waking up at uh, either five or six a.m. Going hiking. Yeah. Tomorrow I had planned to go to Best Buy to buy this like, like Ethernet thing. Um, but my internet seems to be working fine now. Um, so maybe I won't do that. But I mean, I might hang out with one of my friends. Go mm-hmm. just uh, uh, scout out locations. So, you know, speaking of, I think by the time this goes up. I will have announced that I'm making a short film. I, I've told people this already. It's not new news, but I'm making a short film. We're set to film very, we're very soon. The script is basically done. Just like, you know, final touch-ups and like stuff to make sure we've got everything on lock. But uh, it's, it's going to be an action short film. Um, so don't expect some deep narrative message. It's just kind of, more or less a showreel of us trying to do action crap. Oh, it's going it's to make you contemplate the meaning of life. It's going to make you, yeah, it is going to make you, it's much better than anything Scorsese has laid his hands on. Um, Cinema. So, yeah, fight me. At me. At, at, uh, at Mithy with ten eyes. Scorsese, come at me, bro. Um, speaking of Scorsese, by the way, um, I was having a chat with uh, Christian from Production Journal. And we were talking about Scorsese films. And I was like, yeah, I think the only Scorsese film I've seen in full is Shutter Island. And that too, that was just a few weeks ago. I haven't seen any Scorsese <laughs> film like in yeah. full. And he just disconnected the call. 
because he was like this this son of a bitch and oh, rightfully rightfully so i mean we he called me back it was just one of those memes but yeah i need to watch more scorsese films i'm um i do want to talk about one thing i haven't told you this yet scribe so this is a this is a real surprise i, I saved this one for the podcast for for oh. good content right oh, okay guess guess what movie i watched uh yesterday or day before yesterday i think what catch me if you can oh hey i like that movie you, see here's the thing right as, as a kid like i was eight years old right and i saw the movie and i saw like so he was like putting the he was putting the things from the the scene with him taking the things off of the airplanes right yes, and putting yeah. them on the checks that's that that scene has always been iconic to me not for like the pop culture of it but literally just because that's the only scene i saw on my tv that was like one of the first things i saw on my tv oh right my God. yeah and so but i remember while that was going on or like maybe it was later they were defining the word fraudulent right Mm -hmm. so in my mind like later on in life i thought i wonder if the the movie to bring the idea of fraudulence into the mainstream world was catch me if you can but i was fucking dead wrong the idea of fraud has been around for a very long time <laughs> this movie yeah. just used it but like in the back of my head i was like this was a movie made to educate the world about uh like check frauds and stuff and it's like no that was still a thing it was just an entertaining movie that spielberg made and off of the the real life see, story see whenever i think of catch me if you can i always think of the one time i was a kid and my uh father was watching the movie and he was on the one of the explicit scenes in the movie mm. and i walked in and he immediately changed the channel so that's like the only scene out of the entire movie <laughs> that i saw and then like a while later my high school teacher says for our business finance class that we're going to watch catch me if you can. Um, now, uh, whenever teachers pull this off, they act as if the movie's going to educate you on said subject. Uh, well, really all it was, was a good time for me to watch. Yeah, movie. exactly. That's honestly that a lot of people have that premonition that, Oh, when teacher shows movies in class, it's going to be like boring. And to a certain extent, yes. But then sometimes I do remember like that. So like one time we were, I remember in like fifth and sixth grade, because fifth and sixth grade were like, it wasn't, we had like the same teachers in fifth and sixth grade, right? Yeah. It was, it was weird. The school I went to was kind of weird. Um, but what, what happened was we were going to watch the B movie for something, right? And then instead of watching the B movie, we watched this like, kind of like like not documentary but documentary ish film on like the extinction of bees and stuff like that and all yeah. of us in the class were like oh my god i wanted to watch jerry seinfeld do his do his comedy routine in the b movie right because it's a b yeah. movie um because i mean everyone hates the b movie but it's better than watching a fucking documentary um yeah. but like wait people I hate actually, the b movie shut the fuck up you don't know that people people don't i don't think people hate it but like they clown on it right kind of like the emoji oh, okay movie. Yeah. but like i mean that's actually not a it's not a terrible movie surprisingly and i i have this i have this meme as a like a thumbnail um like why it's a why it's surprisingly good or something um mm -hmm. and i have that as like a thumbnail for like oh if i'm gonna make a video about the how the B movie subverts your expectations or some shit. I don't know if I'm going to ever make that video, but I feel like someone needs to talk about the fact that the B movie isn't as terrible, like as everyone makes it out to seem. It's just that it's a meme, right? Cause Seinfeld B tries to fuck woman. Ha ha ha. Um, but I mean, but like we watched this documentary instead and it was actually kind of cool. And then the other thing was in the other like history class that we had, we watched um, History of the World in Two Hours. Did you ever watch that? Uh, no. I saw History of the World in 15 minutes or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Bill Words thing. Dude, yeah. History of the World in Two Hours is like, I don't know if the documentary holds up today, but as a kid, it was like this weird thing that like was entertaining, but serious, but then also kind of scary, right? And we yeah. it, was like, it, was, it freaked me the fuck out. But like, I need to watch that documentary again at some point now to kind of you know reflect on it. But I just remember as a kid, I was scared by it. Um, I liked it, 
And it was like actually engaging for like a serious documentary, watching it as a, I don't know, like a 12 year old, right? Or like a 13 year old. Okay. So yeah, the, the things we watch as kids, you know, um, but catch me if you can. I was actually, I was going to watch it with my family this summer. And I was like, why don't we watch it? It's this is a Leonardo DiCaprio Spielberg movie. And my dad was like, you know what the rating is, right? It was like, what? I, I don't know. There's like explicit scenes in it and stuff. And I'm like, what? Catch me if you can. The scene with the upbeat shit while he like takes the things off the airplanes and stuff. Th there's explicit stuff. And then, yeah, I, I understand now watching it, what he meant by explicit stuff. But, you know, yeah. he, the thing with this Catch Me If You Can movie, right? Do you know, what yeah. it, you know where it goes in my list? Where? Maybe my top five. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, again, I tweeted, like, right after watching the movie, like, new favorite movie, right? And I feel like people took it as me going, oh, Your this is... top five favorite. list is, like, ten movies. It's, yeah. it's, here's the thing. My top five list is interchanging. It's a revolving door. Things go in and things come out. And some things, if they're fat enough, stay in. They can't get out the door, right? Right, right. Like things like La La Land, um, Jojo Rabbit, uh, Man right. from U.N.C.L.E., you know? Those, those yeah. are fat motherfuckers that just squeezed in the door and now they, they have no way of getting out, right? Stuff like this, I, I don't know. It only time will tell. I feel like this is more of a top 10 movie for me than a top five. But like right now, this is like in my head. This um, Mission Impossible, uh, a Social Network. You know these these are the the movies that are like in my head right now. Yeah. Um. And I it is the thing is I wanna I don't I don't know how I'd make a video on this individually, right? I kind of want to make a video talking because it's adapted from a true story, right? And like the guy the guy who like did all these crimes. Is like an actual like FBI like is it, was he an FBI director now or something? He's like he's a prominent figure in the in the federal system now, right? So it's like it, it's weird to see people in these movies actually become prominent figures. But I I, I do yeah. want to do a video on like this, the Social Network, and the Big Short because they're all kind of they're, they're all like movies, movie movies, right? Cinema movies that are based on true events. And I feel like there are so many different ways that you can adapt to true event. One focusing on the style of it, one focusing on the substance, and then one trying to have a good mix of both, right? Right. Um, and I feel like I could that would make for a good video. I just don't know how to format it quite precisely. But but yeah, I think I think true stories with added suspense, uh, like brought to cinema, are like my new my new my new thing to turn to for, for movies because it used to be like. You know, Mission Impossible movies, watching these, watching, uh, I mean, mainly the Mission Impossible movies, but then I watched, like, I think one of the Bourne movies, um, and then Inception, you know, and those kind of movies, yeah. right? And Tenet. And then now it's slowly transitioning from that to this. So, yeah. Someone, if you're in the comments or if you're still listening, give me more, like, like movie movies, like, at the level of, like, Catch Me If You Can that are based on true stories. I'd love to Titanic. check it out. Titanic. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Titanic is a. I, I watched it as a kid, and I wasn't. It's it's a fine movie. I just, it's it's a weird movie, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's that's my that's my take on take on movies, dude. I watched a movie, dude. Dude, no, no way. One, no, no one gets that joke. Uh, no one gets that joke because it's only in between. <laughs> it's all in between, exactly. Even when um, we're in chat and stuff with random people, we'll say that joke and no one will get it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you want to? What What have you been doing? Tell me some uh, of your drama. I, I, I was telling you this earlier, but like when I edit podcasts, I realize that like I take a long time kind of just randomly putting the cursor at different links in the podcast. And depending on how many times or how frequent it's my voice instead of the other person's voice, it get, makes me more self-conscious about the way I talk on these podcasts. Oh, so man. I'm going to shut the fuck up and let you say what the fuck you've been up to, games you've been playing, movies you've been watching. Give me all your thoughts. You're going to have to add a cricket chirp in there because you asked me this question before, what I wanted I, to say. And I, I am... Oh, um, I mean, same as always. Uh, Wheel of Time. Yeah, I'm yeah, still doing right. that. I'm on book 11. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so I could go in depth. 
but at the same time don't go too in depth go in depth well, in a you know like shallow uh, feet in the water crocodiles are looking at it, but not well, thirsty considering most people that i feel i feel like the most people that watch the channel film caffeine are either moviegoers superhero nerds or gamers right mm-hmm. Right, and I'm not saying they're not readers, but I'm saying they're at least those things that we don't. It's know like if they're readers. if the if the concentric if the concentric circle of moviegoers, gamers, and uh, I guess I don't know what's another group that'll watch this. Uh, YouTube comic buddies, book, comic, comic book. Com- oh yeah, comic book. See, yeah, if it's a con- if the concentric circle of moviegoers, gamers, and comic bookies are like cookies. Um, yeah. This is like the tiny bit of sprinkles on the top, where you'll have a yes. decent amount of people yeah, in and, different and that's pockets. Also assuming but, they made it this far into the podcast, exactly. No one is listening to this. <laughs> yes, no one is going to care about what I have to say. But for that one person that might be listening, this is this is for that one person, like one in a million, that like actually mm-hmm. reads books, happens to read not only books, happens to read fantasy then also happens to read one of the longest series in the series and also happens to be far enough to where this is relevant to them. I mean, is it fair to say that if you if you are a person who reads fantasy books, you're at least mildly aware of Sanderson? It's not... Uh, Wheel of Time was uh, written by Jordan, but the end was written by Oh, Sanderson. okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 fuck, sorry. Um, are you, uh, that you're, like, aware of Wheel of Time? Yeah, you're probably like if you're an avid fantasy reader, then you're probably aware of Wheel of Time. Whether you get into it or not depends solely on your personal preferences. Because uh, Wheel of Time, from what I've seen, is a is one of those book series that's considered one of the greatest things ever written, but is also a massive hit or miss for many people. Like it is. I guess. I guess the thing, a question I never asked you really about Wheel of Time is like. What's the overlap look like with young adult? Because we always talk about how, I mean, some people like young adult and some people don't, and some people have problems with young adult and stuff like that, right? And I'm not saying that your audience is wholly young adult or anything like that, but there must be some overlap. What exactly does that look like? Like, for uh, Wheel of Time is not young adult. Like, people going, I mean, it's not, right? But, like, how much of the audience is people that went from Percy Jackson to, like, Wheel of Time? What does that audience look like? Okay, so I, mm, see, I don't know a lot. Everyone that I know. Or do people come in from, like, Lord of the Rings? Like, what, even that is, Lord of the Rings, I mean, young people read it. But yeah, it's not I really it considered young I adult. So, okay, well, see, that's again, it solely is on your personality. I don't even think it's age because I've seen people that are like 20, 25, 30 that drop Lord of the Rings by like chapter three. Mm-hmm. Which, like, from my perspective, if you asked my 12, 13 year old brain, like, hey, would you drop this book at, and like you asked me at chapter three, I'd say, hell no, this is insane, right? But a lot of like, like you know, I, I do want to do a reread at some point because last time I read books two and three was like when I was 13, maybe. I, I barely remember anything other than stuff from the movies. But the point is, uh, as for Wheel of Time, as I said, it's a hit or miss. And it do- I don't think it depends on age because I think people of, I mean, granted, there are some explicit things in there, but like, who cares about that? I read, it's not. I read, um, I read uh, Song of Ice and Fire when I was 13, so really it doesn't matter what your age is. Mm-hmm. The point is, um, for Wheel of Time, the reason it's a hit or miss is because some people don't like the overly descriptive uh, nature that Jordan writes in. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't know how Sanderson does, because I haven't gotten to that, the books where he, that he's written yet for the series. I've read Sanderson books, but I haven't read the ones that he's written for this. Supposedly, he mimics the prose relatively well. But I also have a friend that's on book 12 that didn't like the prose in books 1 through 11. And she says that the prose is more direct, which is interesting. Because Jordan has this tendency to describe a lot of things. Sometimes things that don't matter at all are, and are purely there for the immersion and depth of the world. Um, and, and also books. So th- in the community, there's this thing called the slog, right? And mm-hmm. it's always like it's one of the biggest things that I've noticed. I as think you told me about this once a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And the slog is basically a point in the series during the second act of the entire series of varying sizes because everyone has their own opinion on it. I think it is like again, what like the series, the slog 
whether it exists or not and how big it is and where it is is purely up to the person. So people say it is somewhere around, like if you took the union of everyone, what they say, it's somewhere around books seven through 10, right? 10 being one of the worst and eight being like a dip as well. Um, some people sometimes include book six, which I have no idea why you would do that because book six ends with one of the most pivotal scenes in the entire series so far. Um, but for me, I think the slog is, I, I think it's, you can't call it a slog as a blanket statement because there are definitely huge scenes, especially in books nine and eight. Um, and seven and 10, I can understand because for the most part, it's like pretty mellow, like nothing's really going on. So for me, I'd say, yeah, I can see why people include seven, eight, nine, ten, And it was definitely the hardest part for me to get through. But I think if you, I, what got me through was the anticipation for 11, which was not only Jordan's last book in the series that he wrote before he unfortunately passed away, but also considered his best book in the series. Hmm. And which is what I'm on now. And let me tell you, I finished the prologue a couple days ago, and I think I told you this. Oh my god, it was a juicy prologue. Like, I, I think this is the best prologue I've read in the entire series so far. And that's that's against ten other prologues. So, like, that means something. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm, I mean, you're on book 11 right now, right? And you said there's yeah. 14 books or 12 books? 14. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think there was going to be 12. Okay. Uh, there was going to be 12, and then he died, and then Sanderson made it 3. Hmm. Uh, yeah. That's cool. Um, I guess you're gonna, are you gonna, are you gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna make a, I, I'm forcing you to make a video, I'm putting you on the spot, make a video, make a video where you review all the books. I, I, I would, but at the same time, like, look at our demographic. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. No one's gonna click on that video. I mean, I'm not, again, I'm not you saying. You could do. If you if saying... you if you find someone else who's like super into Wheel of Time shit and like no. has like like and is would do like a podcast, maybe you should I do know. like a podcast with someone. I know a few people, um, mm -hmm. and definitely like I could do a podcast. I know a lot of people that actually finished the series. I know one guy; he's from Ireland. He's finished the series twice, which it, it, like you know when. When people say I've read Harry Potter like four times, like yeah, this seems more intensive than reading Harry yeah, Potter a few times. Because keep in mind, I, I've spent a better part of this year reading this series. Now, granted, I was reading other things, mm -hmm. but still, like getting into the series is an investment. Because and, and keep in mind, I was reading this during quarantine. So, like, if there's any time in the uh, in my life that would have been best for reading something big, it was now. And I still took uh, partially because I'm a slow reader, partially because I was reading other things and partially because i was also doing other things right in my free time um but with that said i have pulled out like seven to nine hour sessions in a row right mm -hmm. um and so with that said it's a it's a big investment to get into like uh you could very well spend an entire year if you're like a person working a nine to five job coming home at, from work and sometimes reading is not the first thing on your mind because it, 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 especially with this book there are so many names and plot threads and locations. Like, it, it's hilarious to see a conversation or be in a conversation with someone reading the book with you. I have a few friends that are like that. And half, sometimes the conversation is just floundering with names. Like, like oh, oh, this guy? Like, yeah, yeah, that guy. It was some, something like that. It's, it's pronounced something like that. And then the pronunciations are, are always debated on. Right, like there's one character with the name Nynaeve, and for the longest time, the way it's spelled, I thought it was Ninaeve or Ninavi, and I was corrected multiple times. But by that time, I'd already read sixty percent of book one saying Ninavi in my mind, but it's Nynaeve. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's just the that's the main character, and there's so many like that where there's so many like. One sec, my parents are here. Uh -huh. Are we cutting this from the podcast? Are we not cutting this from the podcast? Do I know? Do you know? Does anyone know? Welcome to the podcast. I might cut this out. I might not. I, I'll probably cut this out. We'll see. Any, anyway. Uh, yeah, podcast. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Scribe keeps telling me to read these Wheel of Time books. No, he keeps telling me to read another series. But... But yeah, 
this this seems cool. I I watched a few Daniel Green videos on it, and it seems cool. Uh, I think they're making a, a an Amazon show based on it as well. I will be definitely checking that out. Uh, and it looks cool. I mean, the casting looks cool for it. So, you know, that that's that's cool. But yeah. All right, I'm back. Sorry, my mother was in, <laughs> insistent in in well, not insistent. Wait, incessant on having me eat dinner now and no matter how many times i told her i was recording something she's like she, she just wouldn't understand like it, it just went through one year out the other asians yeah. man i tell you <laughs> asians yes <laughs> like, Did I, yeah. are we cutting this out of the podcast are we not i will i will i, make I heard you talking in the background because See, I, I, was I, like, like I was like let me fill time because i don't want to edit this podcast too much <laughs> The reason we were recording this is because I had to edit the last podcast too much. Oh, wait. While we're on the topic of Asian parents and reading, I want to get I want to get I want to get something interesting across. Okay, so I'll be sitting in like a room, right, and I'll I'll like be reading, and yeah. my father will ask me, "Hey, what are you doing?" And I'll say, "I'm reading," and then he'll just be like, "Oh, okay," and then he'll continue, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say let's reverse this and say I'm sitting in the room and I'm like gaming, right, and, mm -hmm. or, or like. Usually I'll be inside, so he'll. That, he'll call that's me. where you get the hard no. Uh, no, 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 not the no. I'll get, I'll get chores. I'll get chores. I'll get work, and I'll, I'll get some random question that he'll just come up with about some technical thing that I'm doing, and then I'll obviously say, uh, or for the chores I'll go do them, and then I'll be distracted from the games, and for the question I'll probably not know it because he'll be answer, asking me something that I haven't learned yet, and he'll be like, hmm, maybe you should know that. Because, you know, you're in this major. I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, maybe. And then I'll go back to gaming. And it, 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 it would be like 10, 20 minutes lost for no specific reasons other than because my parents would rather not have me game. So they're like, they're like negatively reinforcing the fact that every time they see me game, they will interrupt me at least once. Yeah, I mean... I, it, it, I mean you know, here's the crazy thing. It actually works because now... When I have like a decision to make of, okay, I have two hours of free time. What am I going to do? Read or game? The mad lads that are my parents actually make me want to read. That would just because they'll stay away from me and leave me alone. That's actually, I mean, that's the thing with when I was back in the summer. I mean, I can't be recording podcasts and editing and I'm, I, I don't have a gaming console, so I can't game, I guess, technically. Yeah. But I wouldn't be able to game as much, but I spent all the rest of my time, I mean... Either scripting stuff, because I mean that's what, how I, I got obsessed with YouTube in general. Is because I was because the boundaries of I'm I mean I can't game right. Yeah, I'm watching too many YouTube videos already, yeah. so it's like I need something else to you know fill my time. And I have a passion for this, so I might as well put time in this. But yeah. the other time I I spent just rereading kids books. But yeah. but yeah, um, I mean yeah, I was I mean all I was talking about was just the uh, Wheel of Time's getting an Amazon show, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, well, yeah, that's true. They they've casted cool. a few main actors or main characters with actors. I mean, um, I'll, I mean, I'm obviously gonna watch it, especially because um, we already have Amazon Prime, so mm -hmm. um, definitely gonna watch it. Um, I'm not really, I don't have any expectations because I, I think I told you about this. Like, I went into Witcher, the sh like the show Witcher, having read uh, two of the books and played The Witcher two and three. Mm -hmm. I went into the 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 show a fan but i went in with no expectations because in my mind i was like even if this is bad i lose nothing because there's always the other things right it's mm -hmm. always the it's always a continuation of the canon that i'm always worried about right because that that could actively ruin things but whenever it's like an adaptation usually in a movie or show right i'm like you know i don't care right like i I can only gain from this, and I did. Mm -hmm. I gained very much from it. Even as in, I, I heard a lot of avid fans didn't like the show. I personally really, really enjoyed the show because I remember as soon as in because you've seen episode one, and, and as soon as he kills that monster in the first like opening scene, and then he walks into the village on his horse on Roach, and the music kicks in, and, and and I'm just sitting there like, holy crap, that was actually good. And I'm watching The Witcher played by Henry Cavill on a Netflix TV show that's giving me chills what is this <laughs> and mm. he was in the tavern and it, it like it, it took it took me the entirety the first episode was is probably one of my favorites purely just because i was in shock the entire time that this was turning out to be really good and even like one error that they made in the first episode because they adapted a specific story from the book uh, they made a slight error that didn't it was less an error but just a missed opportunity 
I, I was like, why didn't they explain that? That was so easy. It could have done that, and it would have made the story better. But even that, when I noticed that, it, w- it didn't matter because I was just so enraptured by everything. The set design, the costuming, the acting, the sound design, the choreography, the it, just everything about that episode is amazing. I will say, I was re-watching that Witcher, um, uh, Witcher versus the Bunch of Thugs. Um, fight scene? Uh, yeah, the fight scene where he slits that guy's fucking uh, like top half of his head open. Um, yeah. And like, it's very well executed. Um, yeah, as much as I don't like, I I haven't finished it because I've been I haven't thought to revisit it. I will at some point. I just I haven't thought to do that yet. Yeah. Um, from what I saw was good. The series stuff was kind of boring, and I mean the end of first stuff was cool, a little bit dragged out. Um, I wish we had more Geralt because I mean not just because I'm a Henry Cavill stand, but also I think he is kind of the best character, right? Not yeah, just yeah. as a focus on because I feel like more so than what I've seen from the games the focus isn't as much on him right it's just that he is he's there right and he's the so, he's the main character i guess yeah so the uh, judging so again i'm sort of reading past what i assume season 2 will be, uh, reading i'm reading what season 2 will probably be about right mm. now uh, it's called blood of elves the the book that it's probably going to be about the season 1 was based off of the first two books which is a collection of short stories uh, Blood of Elves being a novel, the first novel, but the first two are short story collections. And each episode roughly um, correlates to one of the short stories in each book. Now, the way in the short stories does it is each short story is in the point of view of Geralt. I'm pretty sure. I'm like trying to think, and I don't think there's any in anyone else's point of view. But the side characters that are basically just main characters are definitely Yennefer and Ciri. Not so much in the first book, but definitely in the second book. Because the second book is where most of that... Because the first book is... The Last Wish is all about Geralt, right? It's about explaining his psyche through each of these uh, nuanced mini-dramas um, uh, through these like short contracts that he does. And that takes the span of the entire uh, short story. And each short story is like a contract that he does... And it sort of solidifies his character as who he is. The first one, it shows that he is a moral man, and he's willing to negotiate for moral means to get a, a man to get his daughter back. The mm-hmm. uh, the other uh, short stories establish his friendship with the Eskir, you know, Dandelion, as he's called in the uh, in the games, and um, and they all do that. The second book is what really enforces the relationship between him and the other two main characters, which have which are of course Ciri and Yennefer. Right at the end of book one, you see the um, the uh, origin of Yennefer and Geralt, which is of course episode five in this in this, in this show, which I don't think you've seen, but you will see whenever you watch the next one. because yeah. I believe you. you I think that's it. the next one. Yeah, I stopped yeah. it. For. Yeah, that's the that's that show. Like the the book is called named after the first book, The Last Wish, is named after that one story. It's called The Last Wish. And you'll get, you'll understand why it's called the Last Wish, and it and it builds this strange dynamic where the two are in love, but they don't know if they're in love because they're in love or because some twisted destiny is binding them together. So like they're, it's like it's so nuanced because they're actively trying to get away from each other and hurt each other, but at the same time love each other. But at this, it's like just so complex and toxic, and it's mm-hmm. hilarious, but at the same time endearing. But at the same time, you just want to punch both of them in the face because they're both terrible people at times. Um, and uh, I like what they did in the show with with that. Right? They took mm-hmm. a little bit of a different spin on it, but they kept the whole Jennifer being an ambitious, power hungry. Um, woman who wants her independence from just the world and Geralt as essentially. Anya Chalotra from what I've seen in these episodes is a fabulous actress. She's yes, going to be in she's going to be a, she's going to be a voice actress in um a Snyder's animated thing for Netflix which I'm kind yeah. of excited for because I mean I'm not the biggest Snyder fan but I like his visuals, right? And yeah. I've seen a little bit of that owl movie he made that was animated, and that looks like spectacular, right? For yeah. the, the the age that it was made, it looks like spectacular. I think Zack Snyder and anything makes sure whatever he makes looks spectacular at least, yeah. right? Yeah. Um. So for an you know for an animated thing that he's making for a streaming show, I I'm very excited to see that. And yeah, yeah he's got he's got a lot of good voice actresses. So it's cool to yeah. see a good actress. And, and I think since we're on the topic of Witcher, I guess I can tell you. 
one thing that I just remembered that I was doing for a while, and that is playing replaying Witcher Three. Yes, you've been saying this. Yes, and I, um, I saw a little bit of your gameplay. Here's the thing with you replaying The Witcher, right? Yes, it's cool. You play the game too much, but then again, I can't say anything because if it were up to me, I would be playing Arkham Knight nonstop. I don't actually have that many hours in Witcher Three. Surprisingly, really? like I, 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 on my on Steam, which is where I first played it. Which, granted, I played it in like really terrible graphics, like the lowest settings, and even then, it was only like thirty FPS. So, like, I, I arguably played it in like the worst possible way. Uh, possible, but but still, it it was the best game I've ever played. And I put in, I think, 100 hours into the full game. Uh, and that I say full game, what I really mean is the main story, a handful of side quests, and the two DLCs. I didn't do a lot of the side quests, which I realized I really missed out on a lot of the game. But it, it's still... And now, second time, I've already sunk in 20 hours in my newest... Uh, one sec. Oh. Well, we, got, we, got another, we got another break. Yeah, I've, he's been playing The Witcher a lot, and it's cool. Uh, we set up like a little streaming thing, and you know, by the way, this is a good chance for me if you're listening to this and you haven't checked out our Discord server yet. Check out our Discord server; it's cool. We record the podcast in here, um, and it's cool. But like, also, uh, what else do we do in here? We uh, we we try to host movie nights. Try to I, usually, if we have a movie in mind for like a weekend or something, I'll. Uh, everyone see if they're free to watch. Um, uh, Christian and I, Christian will pro- sometimes play Arkham Knight in here, uh, and we'll be watching him do his thing, and that's kind of cool because um, it makes me feel like I'm playing the game, which makes me miss the days when I did play the game. Um, which I've been mean, it's kind of kind of on the down low. I haven't told anyone about this, but I have been thinking about making another Arkham Knight video. I don't know what angle I'll go at it. I but, heard Arkham Knight when I said I came back, and I was like, yeah. "Oh no!" Oh no, no! I was just talking about how we we've got a Discord server, and it's publicly open. I think yes. Um, so yeah. feel free to join. We do. We try to do Among Us stuff in here occasionally. Uh, Christian sometimes plays Arkham Knight and Knight and streams it. Uh, I've been. I'm thinking of starting like a movie night kind of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, where we like if people like if we have a night where we want to stream a movie or something, we can do that. Um, but yeah, join our Discord server. Uh, I've been thinking about something we can do, especially the podcast, because um, Brown Table kind of set this up on his server where he was streaming Diary of a Wimpy Kid, right? Mm-hmm. And um, he had it so that some people with certain roles were able to talk in the chat, and some people were muted the entire time, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think of a, if there's a way to set it up where essentially, because I don't think the bot that we're using records like the, the join calls, right? Yeah. Or like the, the da-da and da-da-da. It doesn't record that. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking of a way that we can have it. So like we could record in like general or like in a pod, separate podcast channel. And then people could enter in while we're recording the podcast if they want to listen into what we're talking about. Again, the demand for it is basically zero, right? It would just be a cool thing to set up, because why not? Um, but yeah, that's my idea for the podcast. Um, but what was I talking about? Yeah, join our Discord server. We, we play games and sometimes stream it, because our internets are dog shit for YouTube streaming. Yeah, yeah. I, try, I tried setting it up on this, on this Coffee Corner channel. I tried setting up the streaming stuff, and it... it it recorded something, but the frame rate, I think, was like one frame per second, maybe two frames per second, and that was it. So it yeah, worked, and like, maybe it's just set up to like stream it properly. It just it doesn't work. It, 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 requires it's a surprising, it requires a surprising amount of hardware to actually stream anything. I, I mean, I wouldn't know. I've always owned a very low-end computer, pretty much. Which is weird, because life. I know people stream off of their phones, too, right? Like, how is yeah, that... But- I don't know. I, it also depends on what you're streaming because if it's like a game that's also running, like using the processing power and the graphics processing power, or whatever, mm-hmm. right? It's like an added load onto the onto the computer. But it's if you're just like, I go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say if you're streaming a movie, it's obviously lighter. But I've always, even on my computer, I've always noticed like a slight sort of sluggishness to the um to the stream 
um, mm. or, or like even my own like even my own c- functionalities on my side, like my mouse will be slightly sluggish. And again, this is this is due to the fact that I've always owned a very low tier computer pretty much all my life. Like mm. my first PC that I got was um, an all in one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I... um, it was it was bad because I remember having. Did I ever tell you I played Assassin's Creed Three on a, a on a resolution purposefully that would like a ratio that took up like the middle like forty percent of the screen, mm. so the rest was just black. And because it wouldn't run on anything else, like yeah, it, it would. It would be like five frames per second. That's the fucking life, dude. I, it's weird. Like yeah. I was playing Fortnite back like a year ago, no, not a, like half a year ago, right? Yeah. It was working well on my laptop, and then it stopped working for some reason, and now I'm trying to reinstall it, but it's fucking a hundred gigabytes of data right now. Yeah, that's insane. Like, I don't, it's stupid. Epic Games, you're not listening to this, oh, but if you wait. are, fuck you. Wait, wait you, know, you know what? You know what's crazy? Like, like we let let's reminisce on our times where we struggled to play like a single game in our lives. But, I, you know, like, here's the thing with Fortnite: it actually ran pretty well on my computer. No, yeah, it runs on my. It's surprisingly well. Like, I mean, if it runs, I wonder. I wonder I, if it's if it's that big. Is it going to run worse? No, no, I don't think. Okay, it should. Actually, yeah, that's no, what I thought. Yeah, but the, he, he, here's what I had to do when I was a kid, right? When I was on my, I think it was when I was eight or nine on one of my birthdays. It was either the eighth birthday or the ninth birthday. I'm, I think it's ninth. I used to think it was eighth. It's ninth. I was gifted uh, my first actual video game that like wasn't just Wii Sports that like came along with the Wii, because I got the Wii um a, like a while back, but I never actually played. I, my 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 only game I ever played was like Wii Play and Wii Sports. But my first actual video game that was gifted to me separately from the from the package was Mario Galaxy, Super Mario Galaxy mm-hmm. One, and um, and thus started a chain of events that would make my life miserable. Which is, of course, <laughs> liking, which, which is liking video, game. video games in an Asian family. That uh, is quite possibly the worst thing you can do to yourself. Yeah. Ever. Well, I it, mean, yeah, that's why I. I'd... I regret playing Arkham Knight is because now all I think about is playing Arkham Knight. <laughs> like, I, like here's the thing: I, I, I was, um, I was into gaming, like, but I even then I would still call myself like a relatively casual gamer. Right? I only ever mm-hmm. played one game a year, and that was because my parents only ever bought me one game a year, and that was on my birthday. And occasionally they bought me stuff on Christmas because it was like free and stuff, right? Or not free, mm-hmm. but cheap, very cheap. Yeah. Um, but that one game a year, so I had whatever I chose, I had to make sure it would last me. So I, I, it, these were like big events of my life, right? I, it's so mm-hmm. big. I remember every video game for every birthday thereafter. So after Super Mario Galaxy, I believe it was Mario Kart. Then it was Super Smash Bros. Then, then my friends gifted me Lego Batman and 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 Mario Kart on the DS. So I got three games on my twelfth birthday. It was insane. I was like, Dude, holy God. Uh, can I say one thing to shit on your childhood? What? Lego Batman on the DS kind of sucked. No, no, Lego, I, I, Lego, I, wait, no, Lego Batman on the Wii. Oh, okay, okay, that's fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. I uh, I remember yeah. as a kid, a friend had Lego Batman on the DS, and I was used yeah. to playing it on the PS3, right? Yeah. And yeah. so I played it on the DS, and I was like, "This is I mean, the DS versions are always inferior." That's true, but sometimes you get it where like it still it matches with the gameplay, right? And yeah, yeah. Lego Batman just it did, I feel like maybe Star Wars was fine, but like with that, it was it was just it felt weird. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah. I also had, I also had a DS, which always kind of gets forgotten, but uh, by me. But I uh, the two games on the DS that I got with the DS, right? Uh, this was. I had to like, okay, this is gonna sound stupid. I had literally had to write a one-page essay as to why I deserve a DS, on ri- handwritten on a notebook paper. I remember sitting on the couch next to the window. It was like 8 p.m. and it, the the leftover balloons from the last my brother's like birthday party were still hanging. I remember it so vividly. Yeah. I'm so lucky. All I had to do was just wait for Christmas. Yeah, I know. And I, and I was basically making an essay why I deserve a DS. And eventually, I got the DS. And I had Lego Star Wars: The Complete Saga on the DS. I have played the sh- 
the living damn out of that game. Yeah. And you were about to say Sony, shit, but you didn't. I could tell. I could sense yes. it in your voice. <laughs> and then I played Kirby Superstar Ultra, which is quite possibly the best DS game to have ever existed. My God, that game is amazing. Here's and, the thing with the DS2, because I had a DSi, right? Yeah. I, I, I keep saying, like, I had a DSi, I got a PS3, making me sound like the most fucking privileged kid of all. Because I know people usually shit on, like, PS3 kids, because it's like, oh, you were privileged, you got the fucking $600, $700 machine. And I, I think yeah. we got it, like, a while after release, so it wasn't that expensive. But yeah. uh, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to the console market back then. Uh, all yeah. I knew is that the Kinect was a thing. And it didn't seem real, and that's because it wasn't real. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think the the thing with the DS two is that was the first time I snuck something into bed and like that, yeah. that sounded yeah. so yeah. inappropriate. I snuck something into bed and played with it. That sounds so inappropriate now. Yeah. Fuck. But that was the first time like I I was like I stayed up at like night and then I did something. But the yeah. thing is the DS you can't. I didn't know how to work the sound controls. So if I didn't, there was one time it made like a sound, like a like an actual sound, right? And I yeah. was like, oh shit, oh fuck, oh shit. And I kind of threw it off to the side, right? Oh. And my parents were like, oh, what, what's going on? It's like, sorry, something, I don't know, something happened with the thing, I'm fixing it, that's it. And yeah. I, I, after that moment happened, I didn't do that for a long time. And then I, I watched Age of Ultron on my iPad. Do you, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for this. But you know how I watched Age of Ultron? Um, yeah, I know. You told me this story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, do you want me to say it for the audience so that they, yeah. they, they hate me? Age of Ultron came out the, the Friday night that it came. Like, it came out on a Thursday, right? Like all movies do. Friday night. I stayed up, right? I found it on YouTube. Someone had, like, for, I don't know how, right? The internet, I guess, was very young back then. I don't know. It was 2015. It's not... If they sh they should have taken it. I think 2014. 2014. Okay. Maybe so yeah. they should have taken it down instantly, right? No, it was up for a while. Uh, literally, like, for a full day, right? Mm -hmm. um, the full movie. Not... Uh, kind of not good font, right? Um, but the sound was okay. I watched the entire movie in bed, right? Mm-hmm sneakily right and i was like oh oh shit right next morning i wake up i do some like some like some homework or something right my dad's like yo you want to go see the avengers movie and i went i did i would i did the fucking you know the the face that's like the oh woo face right with like the, the, like the the like the w for a mouth right where it's like oh, like that i did one no. of those faces uh, I'll, uh, let me let me find an image of it. Oh, face the the one of one of this. I'll, I'll DM it to you and people in the audience. I'm not going to send it to you because you should know what this looks like. It's the OO face, okay? Oh wait, really? I I just realized what I just remember. It's, it's one of these faces, you know. <laughs> I I did one of those faces. Right, Morty face, the Morty face. From is that movie. actually what it's called? You fucking. No, I, I don't know. That's that, that's where. Yeah, I, there's a picture of uh, Morty doing it, so I, I guess it is the Morty face. Uh, and I did one of those, and we watched the movie in theaters, and I came back and I watched it again. <laughs> I, I watched it again in the middle of the night on my bed. That movie is I. So basically, I watched it three times within about 24 hours. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the moment when you spend nine hours or like eight hours watching this out of your day watching the same movie yeah do you know what else i've been playing since my internet went out uh recent like this past few days and it, it didn't go out but i've been i haven't tweeted about this because i don't want to tweet about it i've been in a, a fucking manic breakdown this past day just because of my internet it's crazy but uh um i was i was spending my time playing some lego batman today um, and I finished it. I finished the full game, kind of like kind of like a speed run, but not like a fully speed run because I did still spend time to like collect coins and a couple mini kits, right? Mm. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you know what's funny? The more I think about Lego Batman, the more I realize similarities between Lego Batman and Arkham Knight. Oh I, I I did like a little like emotional thing in like my disruptor video, which I'm still I was revisiting that video. I'm still kind of proud of that video. I think it's one of my 
I guess if I were to put my videos on a on a tier list, it would be one of my A tier videos. Not that they are like in essence A tier videos. They're not. They're all fucking C tier, D tier. But uh, but like in the scale of my like dog shit level, they're they're uh, A tier, right? Uh, A tier, maybe S tier. I don't know. Probably A tier. Um, yeah. But that that's too much of too long of a tangent. I in that video I hint that like oh I, I reminded me of Lego Batman right and that made me emotional and that's true right but the more I think about because I'm playing Lego Batman right now the more I think about it there are so many similarities right so this mm -hmm. based on the suits right there's the bomb suit like the explosive gel right you throw it and then you press the button again it triggers there is the glide suit the same way you glide in in Arkham Knight right. There is the electric suit. Almost like the their game is based off of the same character. Two that I know, right? But like some of these gadgets are just so specific, right? Yeah. Like the electric thing, like an electric suit, right? Uh, and then the... Uh, what's the disruptor like, I guess? The disruptor isn't really like anything in... Um, is it? Yeah. Hey, I'm going to go grab my dinner, and then we'll continue Do the that. podcast. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, while you do that, I'm gonna keep talking these similarities because you already know some of these, okay? So, guys, listen. There's the electric suit, right? That's like the electric gun. There is the uh, glide suit, which is like gliding in the game. There is the, uh, the suit that can make you invisible, right? Kind of like doing stealth takedowns and stuff like that, right? There's a bunch of fucking annoying Riddler trophies in Arkham Knight, kind of like the bunch of annoying uh, gold bricks in the game. I know, right? Crazy. Uh, there is a, a, a Batmobile that's kind of ner not the opposite of nerfed, right? It's tanked because it can do fucking everything, right? That, that's kind of in the game, which actually brings up an interesting point as to how I think... This is so cringe. I think the the Lego Batmobile and Lego Batman 2 DC superheroes is implemented better in that game than it is in Arkham Knight. <laughs> just because in that game, it's just a tool for you to explore the city. Whereas in Arkham Knight, it's like a, like a, like a staple of the game, which, you know, to each its own. I just the implementation in theory is better. Is Arkham Knight a better, better game? Yes. The implementation in theory, in implementation though, in theory, is better. So that's the thing. There's so many weird. Even the plot, it's like uh, uh, he, he teams up with his team at the end of the day, right? And it's about the Batman learning to work with other people, right? Because he's like, I'm alone. It's, I, I guess that's a staple of all Batman stories, right? The Joker is a main villain, right? I guess he's more of a side villain because. You know, the Joker is a side villain, but then Lex Luthor is the main villain. You know, you, you, you catch my drift. The, there's a scene with Scarecrow where things go wonkers, right? Uh, and surprisingly, that, that final, the final confrontation you have with Scarecrow in Arkham Asylum feels very much like the cloud, Cloudburst Room. Like, it looks like it, too. It's kind of freaky. Uh, what else can you do? I'm trying to think of Robin suits that are... Uh, like the ones in the game and i can't think of any robin suits that are, that are like the ones in the game mm. this is the acrobat suit uh is there any i guess you got a remote control battering which is kind of like the drone you can control but that's in lego batman one um uh, yeah i guess there's not that many similarities I guess the layout of the island, right? Because it's like three different islands. And, you know, in Arkham Knight, you got three different islands. Um, what else? Uh, I got the two tall towers, I guess, on opposite sides. Um, you can't go in the water or you'll die. Because uh, that's the same thing with Arkham Knight. Um, even the, the lighting of it is the same. The general aesthetic of it is kind of the same in both. Um, yeah, I'm really I'm I'm scraping bottom the bottom of the barrel for some of these similarities, uh, but but yeah, I think uh, what else? There's the um, 
there's a mention of Superman in Arkham Knight, and there's a there is Superman in Lego Batman. So same universe confirmed. Uh, what else? You got uh, there is one other big thing that like while I was playing, I was like, oh, this is this is a thing, right? And I I can't think of it right now. I don't know why I can't think of it right now. Hmm. Was it something to do with takedowns? Maybe. I guess I mean I guess if you you if you double jump and hit you automatically take down an enemy, kind of like you know environment takedowns or like and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, I am kind of scraping the bar, bottle of the barrel bottom of the barrel here, especially since they are this like the same character. But I feel like there there is definitely like like even like the disrupt like the like the um the explosive gel thing. Right, where you can be a tank versus you know you can you can shoot you can put explosive gel on things. You know, I feel like that's such a like a weird similarity. There's so many weird, just like random similarities. You know, but yeah, that's the that's the, that's the game. Yeah, Lego Batman is a lot of fun. If you haven't played Lego Batman, play Lego Batman. DM me and I can tell you where to get Lego Batman. Um, but yeah. It is a it is a it is a fun game, very fun game. Um, I I might actually, I I re I went through all of Lego Batman one right, and I I I think I now understand why some people prefer Lego Batman one to Lego Batman two, just because like it, it it is a much simpler game, and the man, the man bat level the man bat level in Lego Batman one is absolutely fucking amazing it's beautiful i love it so much uh, i i didn't know what level had the zoo but i remembered that level is going to be the level right that i the thing i think i think in general i feel like the level design like the individual level right is maybe better in lego batman one just because you got these like kind of like it, it feels cinematic you go to the, the zoo it feels like you're in a zoo hello yes i'm talking okay. about I'm, I'm sorry it took so long. I had to no, good. argue was... tooth and nail with my parents just to eat dinner in here. <laughs> and you're you good. know what's hilarious? I always eat dinner in here. So I don't know why today they chose to argue. Here, so I was comparing Lego Batman 1 and Lego Batman 2, right? Yeah. But I was yeah. also comparing Arkham Knight, right? You know what's yeah. funny? In yeah. Arkham Knight, you have Riddler trophies looted all around the city that are very annoying to collect all of them, right? Mm -hmm. In Lego Batman 2... You've got gold bricks littered around the entire city that are very hard to track down and finish, right? I don't think in all games. That's true. That's true. I know. Which is why it's like I'm scrapping bar, bar, bottom of the barrel. But there are like a, a couple of small things that I'm like, oh, that's cool. Keep in mind, any, any narrative things that you choose that are similar are just purely because they're Batman games. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I, was, I can't think of a lot of narrative similarities other than, oh, Batman want to be loner, but he has to work with friends. You know, also, <laughs> that's, also that's complete, the only thing I can think of. Complete side side note. I, yeah, I'm going to go back to Lego Batman because I do want to ask you something, but keep going. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about Witcher 3 before I, we move on because we, this all kind of stemmed from Witcher 3 because okay. I... Finish your Witcher 3 thing. Yeah, so I'm replaying. Right, and I'm out taking my time. I'm not because the first time I breezed through the main story, right? Like I, I was going zoom zoom, and I only ever stopped to like sell things occasionally, and like I didn't even use the alchemy because I mean, on normal difficulty, you don't really need to use alchemy to be honest. Uh, and I, um, and that I didn't really do a lot of the in depth things, right? Mm -hmm. But now I'm really trying to do that. And I'm taking my time with it. And oh my god, I never appreciated how in-depth the RPG systems of the game actually are. They're pretty complex, right? Like the, like the, the crafting system and stuff is it's pretty cool. Like I, I knew it was cool. Like I had the general idea of how it worked, but now like delving deep into it, like on purpose, it's it's really cool. Hmm. Fun. And um, yeah, and every it, there's so much emphasis on uh, to detail. Uh, around the world like like every shack every house every building every every ruin every castle has like some sort of history every bandit camp has some sort of uh story uh behind it uh or or, or something uh and it's just because like i i ran across a bandit camp and you know killed the bandits just like any other rpg 
But then I found a note and there was like a deep depressing story about how these bandits were like friends and they all decided to ditch camp together uh, from their army and because they didn't see a point in the war. And then, you know, they'll they'll be chilling out here and then I just came and killed them all <laughs> and then took all their loot. And every bandit camp has like some sort of drama in their little bandit group. Some are actually horrendously despicable, but others are like a little bit of good, a little bit of bad, and others are just trying to find their way in the life, and they decide to desert the army, right? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, and all of them lead to, like, some sort of treasure hunt or something, where, like, they'll, in the notes, they'll be like, oh, the boss doesn't know that I know that he hides, hides his stash in this tree. Then you'll go and try to find that said tree to find the loot. Hmm. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched enough gameplay of you playing to be like, oh, that's, that's interesting. Um... I might watch some. It, it seems like the kind of an immersive game, though. So I do have to like play it. But yeah, maybe maybe yeah. when you come back to campus sometime, I'll borrow your shit and play it. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways. Uh. Oh yeah. What was I gonna say about like? Oh yeah. I know what I was gonna say about Lego Batman. I was comparing Lego Batman's one level design to Lego Batman's two's level design. Yeah. I feel like Lego Batman one's level design is better after like full playing both games. Yeah. Because. At first, I was always like, oh, Lego Batman 2 is better. But I feel like a lot of that might just be... Some of it is nostalgia. Some of it is the fact that you can be in Gotham City. Because that's by far the best thing about Lego Batman 2 is the fact that you can be in Gotham City. Um, and w- that's what's missing from Lego Batman 3 to me, is the fact that like the, the, the planets that you get in Lego Batman 3 are cool, but it's all reskins of the same kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, with gotham it's like this huge city that feels like you know you're playing arkham knight it's this huge city that you can explore um yeah but the thing with le- level design in lego batman one is like because uh, when i was replaying that like a few weeks ago like yeah. the do you remember the man bet level um vaguely it's the one with like the christmas stuff oh not, yeah now, now christmas, that you said yep i remember so, that and there's elephants and lions, and then yep, you go. Yeah, I remember that. This That's is the best good. level. This is the best yeah. level. That's the fucking oh my god. That one, the Catwoman level is also really cool, right? Because you, it's like buildings and the, the the dark sort of tone of it, right? Yeah. And then I mean, it's a it's a shilly move, but the final level, where you um, the the final level, the one where you um, uh, fight the Joker in the clock tower, right? Right, yeah. And that's the thing is, the, I think the level design in those is, I, I think some of it is the actual level and some of it might be the soundtrack too. Because I just, I remember the soundtrack in the Man Bat level, right? Yeah. was like beautiful, right? And I yeah. feel like in Lego Batman 2, it does go a little bit more of a lazier route where they're like, da 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 and that's it. And it's just that on repeat for like a bunch of levels. And it's yeah. I, I feel like they could have been more unique and that would have added to it. I mean, Lego just, Batman 1 just spent more time on the details, right? Like the small things. True. Whereas with Lego Batman 2, it was all the one world, right? So well, it was like, like, like you're just the, messing with the, best, the same thing. That's the best um, com, uh, example of wide versus shallow, uh, wide versus deep, right? Mm. Like when you have a gameplay mechanic, like for example, um, take, take Portal 2 right or any of the portal games i I just say portal 2 always because uh, it sounds better than just saying portal and also most people say portal 2 Mm -hmm. but take portal 2 it's this really simple mechanic well right you know you 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 blast the teleporter thing in one thing you blast another one one's green or sorry not one green one's orange the other one's blue you go through one you come out the other very simple right but with that, you can do so much. Like, for example, you do one on the bottom and do one on the top, and you jump into the bottom one, and you infinitely fall, right? Hmm. Everyone always does that. But then now you have that momentum, and you have to use that momentum to get somewhere else where you can't jump with your normal jump. So then at this, at, while you're falling, you time the next shot such a way that you, as you teleport final time through the thing, you come out the other end with that same momentum. Like, that's one of the levels. And when I played that, for the first time at my friend's place because i didn't play through the entire game but i played a few levels my mind was just blown i was like holy crap you could do so much with this and and they did a lot with it and the community with what they've built like personal level designs um have done a lot with it Hmm. and it's insane that's like how you go deep with something 
what Lego Batman 2 tried to do was go as wide as possible with the whole Batman with all these Justice League heroes. Which makes I mean it makes free play fun. It makes free play fun as fucking See, hell. I actually don't really enjoy the free play in Lego but it's just too kiddy for me. Like like you can't I, I get that. I get that. This is not awful, but you can't kill people, right? <laughs> like you run them over, but then you just get back up. Uh, I was like, okay, I get it if it's Batman because they're trying to go for. The but you can movie. punch through and break their bones, you know? Yeah, like, but why? Why can't I do that as like Riddler or yeah. Penguin or Joker, right? Yeah. And then um, also, um, there's this really one small thing with movement, but it, you can't control your sprint. It only happens if you're running for a while. Hmm. yeah 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 that, i i playing through the game because i just did that right it, it's annoying yeah, it's annoying i hate that so much uh the vehicles are cool and stuff and you know like like, like you can't it's really hard to get vehicles wrong in something like lego right mm-hmm. um so that's like fine mm-hmm. um the the city feels shallow like it, it feels like empty even though it has people I, it. I kind of dis- it gets boring after a while right because you can't, like, unlike Arkham Knight, you can't play in it for, like, more than two hours and, like, not get bored. Like, after after about, you know, two hours of playing, like, even one hour of playing in the, the big city, just playing free play, you get bored yeah. of it. Right? I, I may, well, with Arkham Knight, I don't think you get as much bored of it after, like, an hour. Like, right? you know you know the games that I play, right? I, I play almost exclusively, like, all the single player games that I buy exclusively are, like, open world games. RPGs, right? Yeah. Or just open worlds in general. Like I just love open worlds. Oh, same, yeah. But for some reason, I think Lego open worlds are just kind of boring. Like they feel I think it's because of the lack of personality. It has personality, but at the same time the people walking around, the people is the what makes the personality for me, right? So in Witcher 3 when you're running around the the city, you see like hordes of people just conversing. You he- hear like random comments, someone insulting you, someone insulting someone else, some random things happening, right? It feels busy, like a city should, right? Mm-hmm. When I played like Lego Harry Potter, for whatever reason, the game didn't respawn the NPCs after I killed them. So for a while, there were like rooms that, yeah, I spammed Avada Kedavra as Lord Voldemort because I was Lord Voldemort in mm-hmm. Hogwarts. So. <laughs> And there were areas that just were empty for, like, the entire game. And it just felt super stupid. Like, I, I hated going in those because I loved going into a room full of Hogwarts students rambling about. Right? It make it gives life to the game. Same with Lord of the Rings, Lego Lord of the Rings. A lot of the world was just empty. Right? It was cool. Like, you could jump off freaking that Mount Doom and stuff like that and do random stuff. But the entire world was, like, empty. And that's kind of how I felt with Lego Batman 2. Lego Batman 2 does it the best because it literally is just a city. Yeah. But still, it's like, it doesn't feel like a city. It really, what it feels like, and, and he, hear me out, this is my favorite. You're going to trigger me. You're going to fucking trigger me. Here my we go. favorite version of a, a free play, like, like a communal hub where you can just play anyone you want and just kind of run around and do stuff is in the Lego Star Wars games. Specifically, okay. Mos Eisley Cantina. Here's the thing with Lego Star Wars, okay? Mos Eisley Cantina, yeah. It seems interesting from yes. what I've seen. I yes. just, I'm kind of illogically apprehensive. I don't know why. <laughs> it's, maybe it just seems like too much. I don't know. Um, because I Lego think- Star Wars are, is, if you ask anyone who their favorite Lego game is, gen- like a general statement, like from what I've noticed, from people that I've seen, and heard and read and blah 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 it's either lego star wars any one of them right i've heard arguments for even like lego star wars 2 the original trilogy i've heard for complete saga of course it's a classic and i've heard uh, uh, arguments for the lego star wars 3 the clone wars for no one ever say the force awakens game or whatever was the latest one mm-hmm. was i never I mean there's a, the skywalker saga one yeah I, is it, wait wait did they not make a force awakens one so that they can make I don't know. Look, I don't know anything past the Lego Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, which is an amazing Lego game, by the way. Highly recommend it. But the point is, I don't remember anything about that, but it's either Lego Star Wars, one of them, or Lego Indiana Jones, and then occasionally you'll get, like, like the amount of people that say any other Lego games is, like, not even close to the amount of people I mean, that say yeah, Star Wars and that. Because I think here's the big three is Lego Star Wars, yes. Lego Indiana Jones, Lego Marvel Avengers, Really? Lego Lego Marvel Avengers? I heard I've heard very few people talk about or, that. Yeah, Lego Lego Marvel superheroes, not Avengers. Um well, there's two? 
Yeah, it's the lowest one on the list, but it is there. Um, oh, interesting. So it's it's Star Wars, Batman, uh, Avengers, uh, and uh, let me get this straight again: Mar- Marvel superheroes, Lego Batman, yeah, um, Lego event, uh, Lego. Fuck! Why do I keep messing up the list? Lego Indiana Jones, Lego mm-hmm. Star Wars, Lego Marvel, Lego Batman, and then uh, I guess Lego City Undercover. Maybe that's the lowest one on the list. So, do you want to know something funny? Yes. This might, this might, this might piss like some people off. Will it piss me? I personally, off? that's what's no, really. I don't think you'll care. Mm-hmm. Um, episodes one, two, and three of Star Wars in the Lego games, I enjoy more than the prequels, like the actual prequels. Okay, right. that will that that'll piss people who like the Revenge of the Sith off, maybe. Um, mm, see, Revenge of the Sith in the Legos, right? Episode three has arguably the best mission in the entire game. Uh, or it's either that mission, it's either that one that has the best mission in the entire game, or it's episode two, which is considered the worst out of the entire saga, that has the mm-hmm. best mission. It's either the Battle of Coruscant, where you literally play as starch fighters, and you're, it's like the only mission in the entire game that does the cool, like, you're behind the ship and you control the ship, like, in front of you. It's mm-hmm. so cool. I, I replayed the heck out of that mission, right? Mm-hmm. It's either that mission that's the best, and an, uh, or... It's the uh, the uh, Jedi Arena mission in in the uh, the the uh, Geonosian Arena. Sorry, um, I remember I have very fond memories with that because I used to go to a friend's place to play that game, right? And we always the first mission we always did together whenever we played that game was the Geonosian Arena, and we would make jokes that every time I played a character with a gun, like Jango Fed, Boba Fed, anyone with a gun, right, that was worth playing with a gun. He would always kill me and say, shush, only Jedi is allowed in this battle. And then I would be forced to choose a Jedi because otherwise he wouldn't stop killing me and he wouldn't start the mission. Hmm. I don't know why I remember that strangely specific memory. But that mission that mission is so much fun because it's just a horde of Jedis and you see a bunch of random Jedis around. And hmm. then you just see a bunch of fighting going on and it's just endless. You could just sit there and kill things all day long. And it's amazing. And, have, you seen uh, the, have you seen the stuff for the, the Skywalker Saga game? No, they're make because like, they're doing the one that's all the Lego games in one, the, all oh, the Lego Star yeah, Wars I in actually one. Heard about this? Yeah, yeah, and it looks cool. So, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe I'll check it out. I need to, I need to play Lego Marvel Avengers. I played it like once a long time ago, and I barely remember anything because I think it was like a friend's like something. Um, but I, I think I need to play that again. If anyone has a PC download thing for that, let me know. Do you want to know a funny story about me re- desperately wanting to play a Lego game? What? Um, it involved my father going skydiving. <laughs> That's a... Uh, okay, we're, we're getting some, into some Mission Impossible shit here, okay? <laughs> no, completely unrelated but uh, to the skydiving. But we, my father was going skydiving, and I was, you know, waiting, sad that I couldn't go as well, because I wanted to skydive. My dad even uh, it, it even made me more excited... Because he showed me the sign where, it, like, all around there were jokes about how if you go up, don't, uh, it's not our fault if you die. Like, there's a bunch of memes about that all over the place. And my dad's like, so you sure you want to go? If you if they let you go right now, would you go? I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't I? And he's like, either you're really brave or really insane. And he goes. And I'm, I'm just thinking, like, which one are you? <laughs> and, and, and so he goes and we're like waiting for this to happen right and we're, we're supposed to like wait a f- i don't really remember much why we were waiting right but we were waiting probably because they had to take off and then wait for all the other planes you know whatever so but even before that there was waiting time for him to like actually get like prepped and stuff right so i went into this waiting area and it was just big like hall that was like open on one side so it was like a lot of like air coming in right it was nice and breezy and there was this tv on the wall on a couch guess what was on the tv lego star wars 3 the clone wars Bro. the game that i have been desperately asking my parents to buy for the last how god knows how long in fact the only reason i was not going insane was because i was binging any literally any video i could find on that game and i got to such a down the rabbit hole that i found these two you like these two people on a youtube channel that are husband and wife i i, I think and they like make game make games for like videos for kids, like kid friendly, right? And I literally watched all of their videos, and I realized they only had eight on their specific channel, and they were really funny. And I was like, they only have eight, 
And so I rewatched those videos over and over again. Point is, I got to this and I see it on. And there's a guy playing, and he's like the skater punk dude, right? He's got like really long hair. He's got like big skater shoes, and he's got like tattoos. And I'm like, oh god, okay. My dad said I'm either brave or insane. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked this guy, hey, can I can I play? And he's like, yeah, sure, kid. And he hands it to me. I'm like, holy, holy sure. Damn. <laughs> this is like your your big fucking sneak attack strategy. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, and he's like, and I'm like, wait, I can, I can just play. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Go ahead. I was just killing time. And he, he walks off and like, he just, he just walks off. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't know me. I'm just this random kid, like 11 year old. I asked for this. And he just says, yeah, sure. I'm like, what a, what a saint, honestly, God works, works in mysterious ways. Yeah. <laughs> so I sit down and I'm like, okay, let's play this. And I play and my mom says, come on, we got to go. We're going to, don't you want to see dad jump off a plane? I'm like, do I? <laughs> do I? <laughs> do I? Oh, nothing. I mean, like Star Wars 3. I mean, like, priorities, woman. Yeah, bro. <laughs> I mean, I do, I do go see him jump because you know, granted it, <laughs> it's just such a stressful time because I was like, I could, I was like counting the minutes that I would have left playing this game, so I was just trying to do anything that I could. <laughs> Dude, fucking, I'm, I'm very happy that we spent the first episode talking about this shit. <laughs> it's actually good shit to talk about. But yeah, you wanna, you wanna end this episode talking about more kind of kitty shit. This is one thing that happened. This, this is a more recent kind yeah, of dates the podcast. You can make an entire relatable franchise of videos, uh, uh, like skits, where we just talk about our childhood. Honestly, and yeah, that's true. There's so much content. That's true. But uh, you wanna, you wanna, you want me to? Speaking of childhood shit, Minecraft. This is where we'll end the podcast. Have you heard the news about the update? Yeah, someone was talking about it in my server. Oh uh, yeah, you know what? Fucking goats cave update right with like there's like flowers and shit in the cave right there is like this uh there's copper now there's copper and it includes oxidation that turns it blue um Mm -hmm. there is uh like like geologist shit where like you can you can you can uh well let me find the thing there's tomatoes now i think okay tomatoes um and a tomato like related mob there is like these the the caves are now like um fucking they're like these there's like like towers and like crystal crystal creatures and stuff in there and also there's a new evil mob called the warden that's like as strong as an iron giant i think um yeah there's a there's it's spiky it's like a cave biome that's like dripstone and it's spike. It looks so cool. It looks so fucking cool. Um, I, I wonder if people will be hating on it. Maybe they will be, but it looks very cool. It, I don't think it's everything that people wanted, but it looks so cool. Also, there's, cool. Glow, there's glow squid now. So, oh, okay. I wasn't really into the last update because, I mean, I mean, nothing really happened in the last update, right? I it, was, it should be really easy to update Minecraft. M- it maybe should be. It should be. And it is. And the thing is, the Minecraft thrives on its uh, simplicity, right? So you, if you complicate as well. Minecraft, Minecraft too much, it's bad. Um, but that's why, that's why they do updates in small amounts, I think. And no, I think but, but you can play on older versions. You can. Yes, you can. The, the, the thing is, but they're like, oh, Minecraft is changing, right? You know? And it's like, oh, it's not. Probably, yeah, it is. But you can always play on older versions. I'm I know, pretty... I know. It, the, the people, people are just picky about shit, you know. Um, like, um, here's gonna. This might actually piss some this, people I, off. This will piss people off. I was not a big Minecraft kid. Okay, that won't piss people off. But the fact that you said that, oh, you can just play an old version. That I think might piss people off. Why? You can I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I, just, I know. People are very, for some stupid like, reason, okay. people are very wait, concerned. Wait, 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 wait. I know you want to end this, but I do want to bring up something, right? Yes. There is, by definition, no wrong way you can play a game. Okay? There, you, you cannot play with Batman and you spend the entire time doing stupid shit. You, you, you guess it's the wrong No, no way. But, but, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Who bought the game? 
You did, yeah. So, yeah. and who's having fun? The, ga- the, the game developers, of course. Yeah. The, no. What? what? No. I, I'm, yeah, that's I not what I'm asking. Yeah. No. Okay. Let's say I buy a game. You're supposed what? to have fun. Yes. In in your opinion, what is the stupidest thing that I could do in Arkham Knight that you would consider? You would say to me, "Scribe, you wasted this game." Uh, you ate the disc. <laughs> okay, how about in the game, not physically uh, damaging um, my own property? Um, I don't know. You just didn't play the main storyline at all, and there was nothing okay, yeah. else that you played. You yeah, just yeah, sure. Let, let's just say I never progressed past a certain point, like like first ten percent, right? And I'm just wandering about the entire time. I, I put in like 20, 30 hours into this game, just wandering about beating up criminals, right? But if mm-hmm. I had fun, then that is that is the, that is okay. Likewise, likewise, if you play a game on the easiest difficulty or the hardest, it is the same to me, hmm. right? Likewise, if you play Minecraft and you know. Tone the thing down to the um the not the difficulty the the version down to the oldest or the newest or the middle. You're still playing Minecraft and you're still having fun. Look at that! I know freedom of choice. Dude, oh, that's crazy, that. dude. You can't you can have fun playing a game if you just play the game the way you want to play okay. the game. I've met a few people, not a lot of people, but a few people in the very loud mi- minority. I'm sure. I hope <laughs> that genuinely have this feeling this and not even like ironically i mean unironically have this feeling that if you don't play a game in a certain way you have not earned the right of calling yourself having saying that you have played the game like and that's only true to like a very mild extent yes and now like i understand you like if i say oh i I, i've played arkham knight but i like or no that's a bad example because i actually have (laughs) okay um Let's say I, I, I say, like, oh, I've played Uncharted, right? But reality, in reality, I've just played the first mission of Uncharted. And for some reason, I'm putting this to the extreme, right? I only have played the first mission of Uncharted over and over again, right? And, and the funny thing is I haven't even 100%ed it. I haven't done all the, like, the find the little token here and there, right? Like the mini kits for that game, right? I've just played that. Can I say I've played the game Uncharted? Maybe, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like I can, I can. I've played the game of Uncharted. Can I say I finished the story, right? Like, can I make judgments on the story? No, because I haven't finished the story. Mm-hmm. Right? I guess, I guess then, I know we're dragging it out a bit, but I guess what's your take on, like, gameplay difficulty level then? Like, if you play a level on, like, Legendary or whatever the fuck, right? Is yeah. that... It, it, or if you play a game on Easy, can you say yeah. that you played the game? I yeah, you can. I mean, yeah, because I know a lot of... I know... Two people that I've met. You know that shit where people are like, "Oh, you played it on normal mode. That's not. A, you should play it on hard mode. That's the right way to play yeah, the game." I think you those know? people are just self-obsessed. Uh, I feel I I find kind of I I kind that find <laughs> I find that kind of pretentious. Just in a sense, it's like, let me play the game to the difficulty level that I want to play. Yeah, the game. No, if it doesn't work for me. Maybe like, I like, should like go back people, and try another level. People but, bring up the fact. People bring up the fact that. Like in some difficulty games, like where you can change the difficulty, I mean, not difficult games. Mm-hmm. Games where you can change the difficulty, some developers will put in like easy, normal, hardcore, bloodlust, right? <laughs> and they'll be like, and next to hardcore in like brackets will be, this is how the game was meant to be played. Yeah. No, if that was the case, then you wouldn't have the other three options, would you now? See, yeah. you can only say that for games that don't have difficulties, like Dark Souls, right? And again, not difficult, n- difficulty. Okay, yeah, from a critic's perspective, I guess you should kind of go f- go for that level if that's what like, they you, say. You can, you can say you can, like game design, right? Your, your game should be able to accommodate those things usually, right? Yeah. Unless it's something like Minecraft or yeah. Fortnite, you know, where it is that it's not bounded by that. But like stuff like, I guess, The Last of Us, right? Where you shouldn't, I mean, the, the discrepancy between easy and... Like it's it's not necessarily even the like having those levels. I think it's the fact that the discrepancy between easy and hard mode shouldn't be crazy, right? It should be something where oh, if you're a beginner player, then maybe go for easy, and then if you like it, you can go for hard mode later, yeah. right? It should be like, that kind of thing instead of being like example, oh, the game was forced to be in a hard mode. Now, 
it's kind this of. This is not. This is not to say that you're in a pretentious prick if you do play on hard mode. I play. No, you know, that's not what I'm saying either. I'm saying. Yeah, the I know. People who make comments about it, those are the people. Yeah, who are like, like yeah. for example, I. Uh, you're like us. Oh, we are pretentious picks. <laughs> We're talking about this shit. No, but like I, I well, yeah, but I'm no, talking yeah. about yeah, but uh, I'm saying that I have a friend who I got into he, he got into witcher 3 because of me and he texts me and he says i started a new game and i'm playing on death march i'm like what you're playing on the hardest difficulty and he's like yeah i'm like you realize things can like two shot you or three shot you early game and mm-hmm. he's he just responds with an emote that's it's it's an emote of uh robert baratheon from uh, uh, uh from game of thrones with laser eyes <laughs> As he yells, saying, I'll do it anyways. And the mad lad proceeds to finish the entire game first time through, all side quests included. Uh, uh, Like 95% of the game on the hardest difficulty proceeds to make a better build than I ever did because he actually grinded for those things. And I'm just sitting here like, holy damn, this guy's good. Hmm. He, He practically no, he's practically played more than me at this point, even though... I got the game like um like two or three years ago maybe. Dude, yeah, and that's the thing. These this was a very heavy gaming episode, but yeah. I guess I guess if we want to go with a concluding statement, right? Just we're rebranding we, our name to Game Caffeine. Yes. Game, no, we're not. That's a good name, but no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> um games. Games are made to to be made as games. That was the most unthought provoking. Welcome to E3. (laughs) Welcome to games are made to be made as games. Sun (laughs) Tzu. Sun (laughs) Tzu is the art of art of games. Games are games because we enjoy them. Why do we make games? Because we want to make things that people like, and people like games. So gaming. Is is what we we're going to we we have gamed the gaming game, games. Hi, I'm right Phil Spector. There. Pay us five hundred fucking bucks for your next Game Pass prescription uh, subscription. Uh, pay uh, extra money for a better freaking presenter. <laughs> <laughs> Diablo three now on mobile. <laughs> that's it. And that's that's the end of the podcast. Yeah.